Hello, ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Cardiology Lectures. I am Dr. Nick Nickham, and today we are going to look at an interesting topic which is uh, different from Cardiology Lectures as such. We are going to look at uh, cardiologists' stress and burnout. It is an important uh, topic for uh, both starting cardiologists and people who are in practice for many years. So, let us begin. Cardiologists' stress and burnout. All the charts that we are going to look at was uh, published by Medscape on Lifestyle Report 2017 looking at uh, cardiologists' stress and burnout. This PowerPoint was put together by Carol Peckham and here is the link to the Medscape uh, source. Before we go into cardiologist stress and burnout, let's look at uh, the racial distribution of uh, cardiologists working in the United States. Of the people who report, of the people who responded to the stress and burnout survey, 64% of them were cardiologists who are of the white or the Caucasian group. The next largest group included the Asian Indians followed by Hispanic, Latino, Chinese and other uh, ethnic groups. Looking at the gender distribution, almost 75 to 80 percent of them were male, where the remaining were female cardiologists. They looked at various parameters and we are going to go through some of those parameters and see what we can learn from this uh, particular study and what message we can take home as cardiologists because there are some startling uh, data which suggests uh, that it's time for us to be more practical. How do the cardiologists stack up compared to a burnout rate in other specialties? As you can see, the burnout rate among the psychiatrists is 42% whereas those who are doing emergency medicine or ob gin there is a almost 56 to 59 percent burnout rate and cardiologists uh, more than 50 percent of the cardiologists express stress and burnout that's a pretty big number from what i can see as a cardiologist because i have been a cardiologist uh, for more than 35 years and I just thought this was all part of the work. That's the challenge we face when we are dealing with the critically ill patients in cardiology. But this is an eye opener because more than 50% of the people are stressed out. They are on the verge of having a burnout. That signals something very important that uh, the trend in the medical profession is moving in a direction which most physicians don't want it to go. As a result, their stress level and burnout uh, rates are dramatically going up. When they were asked to rate on a scale of 1 to 7, how severe is the burnout? Again, here we see majority of the specialists, they rated more than 3.9. That means they are getting close to burnout. And cardiology is right there at the top with 4.4 on a scale of 1 to 7 burnout where the highest was among urologists. But they asked them to rate the main causes of burnout on a scale of 1 to 7. And here are the major culprits. Too many bureaucratic tasks, spending too many hours at work, increasing computerization of practice, electronic health records. Oh, don't talk to me about electronic health records. Feeling just like a cog in a wheel. Maintenance of certification requirement, which is a worthless thing, which is controlled by a monopoly in most uh, specialties. And it is something that has to be removed because that has no practical relevance to what we do as uh, cardiologists or any other specialist dealing with patients at bedside. And of course, insurance issues and a whole bunch of other things. But what is very interesting in this is the, the change in the medical field, the change in the paradigm of how we practice medicine. With more and more employment type of jobs, these issues are going to become more and more relevant and add directly 
to the increase in stress and burnout among physicians, not only among cardiologists, but among all other specialties. Because there are times when I'm sitting at the doctor's lounge and I hear an orthopedic surgeon saying that it takes him more than an hour to complete a patient chart and he has to go and look for the x-ray report, the lab reports, and everything else that is related to the patient, rather than someone having all these informations ready for him and for him to focus what he needs to do as an orthopedic surgeon and that is to diagnose disease and treat patients but those things are a thing of the past now i think it is more prudent to see how well you decorate your electronic medical records that is a reflection of how well you are working rather than how you are using your decades of medical knowledge to treat the patients and that is why we see a high rate of burnout among physicians even as they start practice burnout among male and female cardiologists but let's just look at the bottom line here more than 40 percent of the cardiologists express signs and symptoms of burnout that's a significant number when it comes to male versus female the differences are very marginal among the men who reported burnout they were 51 percent whereas 49 uh, percent had no burnout and the burnout among women is much higher than that we see among men it may be related to their added responsibilities not only at work but also extra responsibilities at home taking care of the house taking care of the children taking care of the social calendar and a whole host of things as a result women feel more stressed and they are more prone for burnout compared to their male counterpart cardiologists now looking at various ethnic groups and see who are more burnt out than the other group the asian indians 58 percent of them said they experience stress and burnout as compared to Chinese cardiologists where only 38% of whom said they experienced stress and burnout and the burnout rate is uh, very close to that of the Asian Indians among white Caucasians. The next question that was posed was uh, bias towards patients with certain profiles. This is an interesting chart that physicians are biased based on patients profiles. It should not be but that's the reality that is seen in both men and women cardiologists take for example patients with emotional problems there was more bias towards them by both women and men almost 50 percent of them had bias towards people with emotional problems similarly we see bias towards patients who are overweight patients who have low intelligence and people who have language differences. I mean, I can understand this because of the language barrier. We may be hindered in terms of delivering the best possible care to these patients. But the other ones come as a surprise, but it should not come as a surprise because uh, in a busy practice, the cardiologists or any other specialists are only able to focus on their particular specialty. As a result, uh, these other factors may not be helping them to do so. The next question was, if you have a bias towards patients with certain profiles, did it affect the treatment positively or negatively? And uniformly, it didn't matter what the bias was, the treatment effect was uh, negative. So that's an important message from this slide. That is, if there is a bias towards a patient for any one of these reasons, it had a negative impact on the treatment for that patient. That's something we as physicians, as cardiologists, or any other specialist, we seriously need to look into and say, why do we have this bias? Is this helping the patient? It is not. If not, what can I do to change that perception? Because people are coming to us for help. And if we are not helping them positively, maybe we should send these patients somewhere else because the patients should not be suffering because of the bias. That's my message. All right, they asked the cardiologists how many of them were happy at work and how many of them were happy outside the work. Because the happiness outside the work may have a significant impact on happiness at work. I mean, I, as a 
cardiologist, I feel that you bring to your workplace your environment at your personal life. If your personal life is going good and if everything is uh, fine, then you reflect the same attitude at workplace. But if your personal life is falling apart, if you are under a lot of stress at home, it can have a direct impact on your work performance and your attitude at workplace. Let's look at here. 54% of the men said they were happy outside the work. This is a big question mark from me. Why only 50% of the cardiologists who are getting almost the top 3% of the income level in this country, only 54% are happy outside the work. What's going wrong here? Similarly, women, 66% outside the work said they were happy. A higher percentage of women were happy outside the work, but uh, when they come to work, only 25% of the women are happy, even though outside the work, the percentage of women who are happy is much higher compared to that of male cardiologists. I can understand people being unhappy because of all the things that we talked about. But why people are unhappy outside the work, something that needs to be explored seriously. So if you're unhappy outside the work, why are you unhappy? When are you going to be happy? What is it that is keeping you from having happiness outside the work? Because you have an income, you got a family, you maybe have children and everything is going right. Why are you unhappy? 50% of them are unhappy. Why? Think about it. Maybe put all the things that you feel are creating this unhappiness at home. Maybe if you can fix some of your unhappiness outside the work, it may have a positive reflection on your happiness at work, which can have a positive effect on reducing the stress and burnout. I'm not here to preach you, brother or sister, but uh, we have to look at it from a practical point of view. There are very important signals that we can get from these uh, charts telling us as to what's going on here, what's not working right, and how do we fix it. Here's an, another interesting thing. When cardiologists were compared to all other specialists, it shows that 56% of the cardiologists were happy outside the work compared to urologists, ophthalmologists and dermatologists where two-thirds or greater were happier outside the work. Maybe we need to know what is it that makes these people happier outside the work which also increases their happiness at work as I explained to you before. So the happiness has to begin at home, ladies and gentlemen. You seriously need to take a notepad, pencil, sit down with your spouse and teenagers and make a list as why you are not happy. 50% of the cardiologists being unhappy at your most comfortable place of residence or outside the work needs some work. All right, let's move on here. They looked at the relationship between happiness and burnout. They noted that 53% of the cardiologists who had no burnout, 53% were happy at work. What did I tell you? You feel happy at work and your burnout rate is considerably less compared to those who said who are having burnout, only 10% of them were happy at work. Something is going wrong drastically. This is something that needs to be addressed. All right, what are the effects of stress and burnout on cardiologists and their attitude, behaviors, and their attitudes and behaviors. This came to me as a surprise that the people who are experiencing burnout were engaged in an exercise program more than the people who had no burnout. Maybe happy people don't need to, to go and exercise. Or the other way around, burnout people with who are on the verge of burnout have so much pent up uh, anger maybe the best way to get it out is to go to the gym and do some punching so you get your anger out maybe that's a better way to get your anger out and drain all that adrenaline rather than unloading it on your fellow employees fellow subordinates or even your colleagues or worse yet in front of your boss 
So go ahead and get engaged in an exercise program. I think that's the best thing you can do if you are experiencing st stress and burnout because burn all those excess calories and bring your uh, temperature down. Now the effect of burnout on weight. Look at this. Those people who had normal body weight, that is a BMI between 18 to 18.5 to 24.9 which is supposed to be normal BMI. Those people who had no burnout, 60% of them had ideal body weight whereas 53% of them with a burnout symptoms had ideal body weight. That means if you are stressed out, you are going to be eating too much. Even though you are exercising, you may be trying to compensate by eating as a result, uh, there is a tendency to gain weight and the top chart shows that. Those people who have burnout, only 39% of them were overweight whereas 44% who expressed burnout were overweight. So this is something you want to watch. Not only this because there are other habits like smoking, drinking and cursing. All of these things are going to escalate uh, with uh, the increasing chances of burnout. As I was talking about alcohol, there is the chart here. Those people who expressed no burnout, only 17% of them were engaged in regular alcohol use, that is one drink per day, whereas 26% of those who expressed burnout were engaged in alcohol intake on a daily basis. This is a substantial increase in the percentage compared to people with no history or no symptoms of burnout. This is something we seriously need to watch because uh, one drink today, uh, two drinks tomorrow and three drinks uh, the day later, it is going to build up into a habit which you may not be able to control and it could jeopardize your license. I have been in cardiology field for 35 years and I have seen many, many cases uh, reported by the state medical board in their monthly bulletins where so many physicians are reprimanded for alcohol and substance abuse. So stress and burnout is not an isolated event. It can lead to some of these uh, habits which are very difficult to tackle and handle. They could eventually jeopardize your medical license. So I think uh, it is very important to learn how to minimize stress and burnout so you don't get into these uh, telltale traps. Okay, they looked at all these cardiologists. I said most of the cardiologists are getting compensations which are in the top 3% of the American income earners with the exception of uh, IT executives and Wall Street business people. But what is really startling in this chart is that only 55% of the cardiologists are happy with their income to support their life goals. Come on, I don't understand this. Only 50%, 55%, that means 45% of them are saying they do not have enough assets to meet their lifestyle goals. Are you serious? Are your expectations way out of line with your income? And I know in most cases, both spouses are working in which circumstances uh, your income far exceeds that of the 99% of the people who earn in this country. And if you are not happy with your income today, when are you going to be happy? Maybe we need to revisit our expectations, our uh, goals and see are they beyond the confines of your income. And interestingly enough, the remaining 45% feel they can neither reach, 30% of them feel that they may be able to reach in the future and almost 15% of them have given up. But this tells me going backwards that maybe we, we should be somewhere in this range today. I'm not talking about 10 years from now, I'm talking about today. So the best way some financial planning may be in order for physicians, especially those who are starting to see how you can balance your life, your work, 
your finances, your family life, your children, so that you are not burnt out in any one of these spheres before it is too late. Okay, ladies and gentlemen, I did a lot of talking. As I said, I've been a cardiologist for 35 plus years. I raised three children and they are doing fine. Now, here are some tips. If you are an employee, which in most cases is the norm in the present day medical environment, your employer sets the rules, period. Let me repeat this sentence again. If you are an employee, your employer sets the rules. If you are in a private practice, you set the stage for your practice. But those days are gone. I did solo practice for 35 plus years. At that time, I also took the major brunt of dealing with all the aspects related to practice, but I could set my own rules. But this is not going to be for majority of the people graduating today or completing fellowships, it doesn't matter which field you're in. Next, learn to master the new paradigm than trying to shift the paradigm or change the system. This is a futile exercise. I see this among physicians of my age group and younger physicians sitting there and in the doctor's lounge munching over for hours as to how miserable the system is rather than learning how to work with the system. Learn to be more efficient, proficient and proactive with the changes, the shifting paradigms. That is the real challenge we face in medicine, not the medications, not the patients. It's the changing paradigm in medical field is the biggest challenge for cardiologists and all other specialists, which is driving more than 50% of the specialists across the board into the stress and burnout uh, category. Look for happiness outside the work. Happiness outside the work can have a profoundly positive effect on your job and your performance as we saw in some of those charts and I agree with them. If you are fed up with your job, if you are fed up with your boss, if you are fed up with your income level, think about the alternatives. Take a yellow notepad, draw a line in the middle, put down all the things that you don't like about your present job and put all these points which I'm going to be talking to you now. A new job, a new boss, a new set of rules, and who knows what. You think it can go and change all of these things at a new job if you were unsuccessful in doing that at your existing job? I tell you, there's a much simpler way. The only thing that you can change in this universe is spelled by three letters, Y-O-U. So if you want to see any change in your life, at home, at work, and in the society, there's only one person you can change, and that is you. I'm not saying that you cannot change some things at workplace, but if we change our attitude, if we change our perception, if we change our expectations, and if we try to work with the system, with the shifting paradigm, we will be much happier than if we were to try to shift the paradigm or change the system. Always look and watch for signs of burnout as it feeds on itself like a wild forest fire and it is always on a destructive path. Do not become a victim of the after effects of burnout, namely smoking, drinking, cursing, or perhaps putting your medical license in jeopardy. Well, ladies and gentlemen, I am Dr. Nick Nickham. I hope we have learned something about uh, stress and burnout. In fact, I have written a book on stress-free lifestyle, and you can get a you can get a copy of this book from Amazon.com. And until next time, I am Dr. Nick Nickham. Have a wonderful cardiology life. Thank you so much for your attention.